This Friday, April 5th, NBA Player Props edition of the NBA PropCast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer-to-peer social betting platform that's U.S.-based and available in 40 states. Head to cut.com, that's K-U-T-T.com, and use promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play their fantasy pick game for a chance to win 100x in NBA, MLB, NHL, college basketball, and more. Sign up today using our promo code NBA SGPN to get a 100% deposit match. Welcome, everyone, to the PropCast, part of the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. It is Friday, April the 5th, currently 12.50 on the East Coast. Here to get into our NBA player props for the Friday night action in the NBA and joining me here to help me break it all down. You guys know him as the voice, of course, on the NFL podcast as well. I got my guy here with me. It's crispy cap and Chris, what's going on, my man. How you doing this Friday afternoon? What's up? You know, it's a beautiful Friday, man. We got, uh, uh, what 22 teams in action tonight, Friday as we, uh, Friday night, uh, here, you know, as we, uh, wind down the season with about six games to go. Uh, it's a lot of spots on the board to like, man, especially from a player prop perspective. So, um, as always, excited to to jump into it, man. Hopefully, we can um continue to give out winners. Yeah, the second to last Friday uh, of the regular season, at least next week will be the last week of the regular season before we do get into the A uh, NBA play in tournament bracket and then on to the NBA playoffs. So, you know, it's kind of winding down the season here. Uh, some more injury news that did come across. I know we saw the return of Joel Embiid on Tuesday uh, against the. Was it the Thunder that he came back against? Um, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, it was the Thunder. It was the Thunder. Yeah, yeah. and uh, they did get the victory, I believe, in that game. If I'm not mistaken, everything just turns into a blur this time of the season. And we also they saw did. them play, yeah, last night, Chris, uh, against the Miami Heat, which was a very pivotal game for uh, both teams there. Uh, but the uh, Sixers came from behind in that fourth quarter uh, and won the game. 109 105 Joel Embiid looking like Joel Embiid still shaking off a little bit of a rust um you know he did finish the game with 29 points wasn't very efficient from the floor only 11 of 25 shot 44% from the floor um the the, the main player last night I'm trying to say it was Tyrese Maxey felt a rebound short of a triple double uh he did finish the game with 37 points 9 rebounds and 11 assists for the Philadelphia 76ers. And uh, good to see Joel Embiid back. Uh, hopefully he's able to you know, get his conditioning uh, ready to go and able to stay healthy, shake some of that rust off before they start the playoff run in the Eastern Conference. Currently, as it stands, the Philadelphia 76ers are in the eighth spot. They're half a game behind the Miami Heat uh, for the seventh spot and one full game behind the Indiana Pacers for the sixth spot. So it seems like it's going to be a battle here between the Pacers the Heat, and the Sixers for uh, determining who ends up as a 6th, 7th, and 8th seed. A little bit of more injury news uh, for the New York Knicks. Unfortunately, Julius Randle done for the season. Uh, Spent about two months trying to rehab, rest the shoulder injury. Just didn't work out uh, for him, so they opted for uh, season-ending injury. So that's a huge blow for that New York Knicks team not having your second leading scorer who are already dealing without being uh, without OG and Anobi. Uh, also Mitchell Robinson. We did see the return of Mitchell Robinson, but just a huge blow here for the New York Knicks, Chris, without uh, Julius Randle for the rest of this season, at least my man. Yeah, it's a tough one. You know, if I saw, <clears throat> I saw it yesterday and said, man, basketball in general, NBA basketball is better when the Knicks are good. You know, that's just the way it goes, man. We want to see the Knicks, uh, you know, Mecca basketball. We want to see that team. Uh, you know, just have all, all the chips on the table. Um, and and it sucks for them as a franchise because this Knicks team, it feels like the Eastern Conference outside of the Boston Celtics is pretty wide open right now. 
Uh, but without him, you know, no matter how much you question his shot selection at times, Julius Randle definitely makes that team, you know, makes that team a lot better. Uh, so hopefully they can at least, you know, get OG back. Um, so Brunson, who, you know, has carried this team, not just this season, but last season as well. Hopefully they can at least get, uh, you know, get OG back to make the games uh, a little bit more competitive and, um, you know, really be able to kind of hound teams on the defensive end with his versatility and, you know, all the different positions that he can guard. But um, it's a it's a humongous blow. Um, you know, if you were you was hoping that, you know, maybe he could come back for the last five games or so and kind of tune up for the playoffs. But yeah, not being there, uh, you know, this this team's going to have to get even more grittier. And we know that they are a very gritty team. Um, so yeah. yeah, don't don't like it as much. Uh, and, and like I said, I, I, I wanted Julius Randle to come back. Yeah, it's tough, man, especially how well uh, this team has been playing uh, for the regular season, especially in the second half of the year. Um, you know, they I mean, they've been a little bit up and down, obviously, with the type of injuries that you are dealing with. It, it's just so tough uh, for this Knicks team who, you know, it seems like that they finally got the team that Tom Thibodeau envisioned with hard-nosed, defensive-minded guys that pride themselves on the defensive end. But at the end of the day, you know, you still got to put the ball inside the basket. And I think that, you know, not having Julius Randle, uh, despite how great Jalen uh, Brunson has been playing this season for them, it just sucks. So hopefully he's able to come back next season uh, for this New York Knicks team and, and you know, be healthy and, and be able to con contribute Um for this Knicks team. So I think that was the only significant injury news that I did see uh, that came across here. You know, Joel Embiid coming back. I think you and I talked about that last podcast. And then also uh, Julius Randle uh, going down. Anything else that you notice around the league? Anything, Chris, you want to mention before we get into our player props? No, nah, I mean, just the, the the injuries, like you said, you know, we talked, I know we talked about Brandon Ingram. That's really impacted, you know, uh, the Pelicans out in the Western Conference. They're on, uh, what, I think it's the sixth game tonight. Um, you know, six yep. game with this homestand and then one in five, I think one in four uh, in their last five games, you know, just been really been playing against some really uh, competitive teams. And, uh, you know, the lack of Brandon Ingram has slid them now they're in the play in because they've I think they're on a three game losing streak. And you got Phoenix, who's won quietly won a couple games in a row. So now Phoenix is taking themselves out of the play in. And we got the yep. Pelicans, who we thought could potentially be a top four seed. You know, now maybe having to play in the play. So it's a lot of, you know, drama and excitement coming in, you know, that's, that's uh you know, kind of based around some of these injuries. Also Kawhi, like missed last yeah. night, uh, didn't play the game. Well, he played the game in Sacramento, and I think he's going to miss tonight as well. It uh, looks like uh, Ty Tyron Lue and that medical staff is going to shut him down for the next couple of games here, you know. So, yeah, injuries specifically in a, in a you know, wide open Western Conference, definitely starting to catch up with some teams for sure. Yeah, and a huge victory last night for the Clippers, man, without Kawhi Leonard. And, um, you know, you mentioned those teams that are shuffling within the play-in tournament in the Western Conference and the East we just talked about, but even for the number one seed in the Western Conference, right, between the three Northwest teams in Denver, Minnesota, and OKC. So uh, Minnesota, again, like you mentioned tonight, has a huge game against the Phoenix Suns. Uh, maybe they could get that number one seed, but it just seems like, Chris, that this is going to, really just come down maybe even to the final day of the regular season for us to find out at least in the western conference you know who's going to be that number one seed and then after that you know the one to eight one to one to nine seed so it's definitely gonna be fun to watch as we wind down the nba season here um chris before we do get into our nba player props for the friday night action of course you guys are listening to us here on the nba propcast on the sports gambling podcast network but did you guys know we have 20 plus gambling podcasts all completely free on the sports gambling podcast network in this week's feature show in honor of the MLB season being back. It is going to be the MLB gambling podcast season just got underway. So we're still getting our feet wet You find myself, Scott, um, Lante guys at the NBA, uh, gambling podcast on the MLB show as well, as well with, uh, Mal of the English premier league and also, my guy uh, Dylan Rockford over there on the MLB Gambling Podcast. So come join us. If you haven't already, subscribe to the MLB Gambling Podcast. I don't know what you're waiting for. We've gotten off to a great season. We're ever so closer to getting 1,000 subscribers on the uh, MLB Gambling Podcast YouTube channel. So do us a favor if you haven't already subscribed to the MLB Gambling Podcast and come join us on the MLB Gambling Podcast as well. All right, Chris, let's get into our player props here, man. I'll let you lead us off. What do you got? Player prop number one, my friend. 
So I want to go to I want to go to Chicago game. Him, you know, if it's not a guy that I typically bet on a lot at all, but I do love the spot. I love the situation. Uh, I love the the defensive metrics, and I'm looking at Demar Derozan here. Um, you know, 24 and a half is his point total for today, and I like the over here. Um, just looking, the first thing that jumped out to me was uh, just the shot zone. I, we know that Demar Derozan lives in the mid range. Short mid range, long mid range. He's the, one of the mid range kings with all the pump fake that he has and all the footwork that he has. And I think that that um, is where uh, they're going to be able to expose this New York Knicks defense. So I wanted to fade a, a Knicks defense that I think is in a bit of a travel fatigue spot, second leg of a back to back, third game in four nights for them. But also, they've been traveling. You know, they had the game in Miami, they come home, go to New York. Then they no, with no rest at all, second leg of a back to back, they find themselves in Chicago. And Chicago is very rested in this by him. You know, if you got a three days rested team versus a team on the second leg of a back to back. So I like that. I like that DeMar DeRozan and the Chicago Bulls are coming off a loss as a favorite against the Atlanta Hawks. I love that as well. And the shot zone that I talked about here, you know, Chicago Bulls are shooting the 10th most shots from the long mid range and they're converting at the 10th highest rate as well. So top 10 in both of those categories. Now, on the opposite, I look at the New York Knicks defense and they're, they're allowing the fourth most shots from that shot range. 26th in shot and shot and long mid range frequency for their opponent, and their opponents are also shooting uh 55 and a half percent here, you know, from that long mid range shot, which makes the New York Knicks the second worst defense over the last two weeks versus this shot attempt. And that, like I said, I know that that's the shot zone that DeMar DeRozan wants to get to. Yeah. The Bulls are either attacking the rim or or shooting those you know mid range shots, and I think that that's where DeMar DeRozan is going to live today. So um, he has back-to-back caches against the Knicks as well. Hear me enough, going back, even going back to last season, one time this year, and um, six of his last seven against the Knicks, uh, he's gone over uh, specifically when he's been wearing the Chicago Bulls uniform. So, uh, one to fade the Knicks defense, like Demar Derozan in the shot zone that the, the the New York Knicks give up a ton of. So, I'd see Demar Derozan having a big game here, you know. So, give me his over twenty-four and a half points to start things off. You know, last time you mentioned a team that uh, is not very good at defending the paint area, the mid-range area, uh, which was the San Antonio Spurs. And you just casually mentioned that you expect Jalen Brunton to have a big game. When that game, he went off for 62 points. So <laughs> uh, not saying that DeMar, I mean, it's possible DeMar gets into the 50, 60 point range as possible. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think you, the way, you know, you're able to find these, uh, the, these, um, stats and and the way that you're able to break it down chris i think it's absolutely phenomenal and i think it really you know buys into what we talk about here on our player props in particular guys that like demar DeRozan, like jalen brunson that are able to take advantage of that inside the you know the pain in the mid-range area so should be another big game here for demar DeRozan. like you mentioned right the knicks defense um not in great form right now as what we've seen season long from this team and how incredible they've been you know they've tailed off a little bit here so um, yeah, definitely could get behind DeMar DeRozan here tonight for the Chicago Bulls. Um, all right, Chris, for my first player, problem go over to the game between the Portland Trailblazers and the Washington Wizards. And if a lot of you do listen to the show, and Chris probably knows where I'm going with this, is you continue fading uh, or betting on, I should say, centers against the Washington Wizards here. And you got DeAndre Ayton coming to town, who's been playing absolutely incredible basketball over the past several weeks. And I'm in particular interested in his rebounds here uh, for tonight uh, against the Washington Wizards lack there of uh, paint protection and defense. Uh, This number was at 12 and a half last night. It's moved to 13 and a half at even money, but I think this is going to be another huge game rebounding wise for DeMar DeRozan. So just looking at the uh, last couple games here for the Washington Wizards and just looking at the opposing centers and what they've been able to do against the Washington Wizards rebounding wise. So the last game, I believe, was against actually uh, your L.A. Lakers here, Chris, uh, and Anthony Davis, who had an absolute monster game uh, against the Washington Wizards. In that game, he finished the game with, uh, let's see, your 35 points, but more importantly, 18 rebounds in that game. You go back a little bit further. Uh, for the Washington Wizards, uh, they had a game against the Milwaukee Bucks. I think that was another game where Giannis had 15 rebounds. Uh, we go back to the game against the Miami Heat, Bam Adebayo, 10 rebounds. And that's something we're used to seeing from Bam. I mean, he doesn't really have huge rebounding games. And then we go back a little bit further. Uh, 
Jalen Duran against the Wizards uh, just last week, 17 rebounds. The game prior to that, Nick Claxton, 13 rebounds. It did take overtime for him to get there, but uh, these centers are just having a lot of success in season long. Uh, they are the team that are allowing the most rebounds to that center position are the Washington Wizards. And do understand Marvin Bagley, I believe, it is back, but I don't think it was really going to make a difference here for the way DeAndre Ayton has been playing for this uh, Portland Trailblazers team. And you just take a look that we've seen an uptick in um, minutes for DeAndre Ayton, also due to the fact that there's not a lot of guys available to play right now for the Portland Trailblazers and guys that are on the injury report. Um, last game against the Charlotte Hornets, 24 points, 16 rebounds. These two, these two teams matched up early in Portland, uh, Chris, where in that game, in about 35 minutes, DeAndre Ayton had 23 points and 16 rebounds in this game. So don't be surprised if we do see, at minimum, DeAndre Ayton getting 15 rebounds here tonight. And then if you just want to ladder it up from there, this could be another huge rebounding game for DeAndre Ayton here, Chris. So uh, I'm going to go DeAndre Ayton at even money right now, over 13 and a half rebounds as my player prop number one here, Chris. Love, 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 you know, when you can take a player prop at such a high number, be so confident in it, and then be like, yeah, I'm probably going to ladder it too. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's, that's how bad this Boston Wizards defense is. And um, and it, you, you you mentioned it, you know, I watched the, the – the only thing I'll add is I watched the, the game against the Wizards, and, um, you know, they, this team is already lacking so much size, right, with Bagley and Rashad Holmes, who I think is, like you said, listed as questionable – um, and they just they just can't. I mean, they don't have the capacity to they don't have the, the girth or the length or, you know, they're not doing the box box out drills or something's missing here. You know, with this Washington Wizards team being able to consistently rebound the basketball. So um, it's an advantageous matchup. I had them down as well, you know, up at 13 and a half um, as one of my um, as one of my uh, top leans. But um, on the short list, I'm probably going to end up getting there. I love that you can get it at plus money here, you know. So, yeah, yeah I like Aiden to, to have a big game against a, a Wizards and Wizards uh, front court that's pretty non existent. Yeah, this number opened up uh, 12 and a half last night, minus 125, and just knew that it was going to move to 13 and a half. So, here we are as of uh, one o'clock on the East Coast right now. That number is at 13 and a half at e uh, even money, or even if you want to call it plus money as well. Definitely shop around, uh, get the best number on uh, the Aiden rebounds here for tonight. Uh, all right, Chris, before we get over to the next uh, round of player props here, let me tell everyone about our friends over at Cut. Cut is a peer-to-peer -peer social betting platform that's U.S.-based and available in 40 states. Peer-to-peer -peer social betting is a new and better way to bet. Bet directly against your friends or other users on sports, politics, pop culture, and other events with verifiable outcomes. It's tons of fun social features that give it a feel of a betting social network. Cut offers lower VIG and fully customizable odds to create your own bets. Cut even handles the payment side of things, so you never have to chase anyone down for money. Social features include group chats, betting leaderboards, head-to-head -head history, user profiles, fan groups, and much more. They also have a rewards program. Get cash back for every single time you bet against your friends or other users. So download Cut today in the App Store or over at Cut.com. That's K-U-T-T -T, and use promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. And Ross, we're brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. I don't know if fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports. It's also the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry. Play their pick'em game. Pick whether your favorite players will have a higher or lower stat total in this week's games for a chance to win big. You can also win 100 times your money in a single night. Pick between two and five players to build their pick to build a pick'em entry. You can also make rival picks, which pits two players against each other. Sign up today with promo code NBA SGPN and get your first deposit double up to $100 as well as an instant pick'em special. Visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the app store. And don't forget to register with our code NBA SGPN. to get your first deposit doubled as well as an instant pick -em special. Must be 18 years or older and present in the state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Concerned with the play? Call 1-800-522-4700 or visit www.ncpgambling.org. All right, Chris, let's keep it rolling here, my man. Next game, or not the next game, but next round of player props here, my friend. What do you got? Man, I'm taking one out of your page here, you know. I, I'm going to the last game on the board, and I'm looking at your guy, James Harden. Assists, nine and a half, you know, and you can get it at plus money. Um, I love it. I love it. You got you got a, a Clippers team that's on the second leg of a back-to-back, -back, of course. James Harden's usage has to go up because Paul uh, Kawhi Leonard has already been rolled out as well. And they get the very, very soft defense. I think he had a ball in his hands a ton in this spot, as, as will Russell Westbrook as well, but – uh, you look at Harden, he has at least 10 assists in four, only four of his last eight games. But 
he's against the poor defense. This is the Charlotte Hornets of the world and the Portland Trailblazers. He's cleared this number pretty easily in the last few games. Uh, and, and in the few games that he didn't go over the nine and a half, he, he, he has been playing against some really good defensive teams. The Clippers have struggled against the Kings, uh, against Denver last night. He didn't get it, but those are some of the better defensive teams over the last two weeks. You look at this Jazz defense, him, you know, and they're allowing the most assists over the last five games, giving up almost north of 32 and a half per, per contest. Um, Fox just had 12. Uh, they played Luka twice. Luka averaged 10 and a half against this team. Uh, even Trey Jones had 10 and Garland had thir- had eight. I'm sorry, Garland had eight in uh, just 30 minutes uh, two nights ago. So um, I like Harden over his assists here, you know, over nine and a half, keeping this one pretty simple against a Jazz front court. Uh, I'm sorry, a jazz backcourt that really they can't stop anybody. Uh, nothing about Colin Sexton or Keontae George defensively scares me at all. So give me hard, give me hard to go over. It's not in the half assist here, you know. Yeah, I couldn't talk you off here, Chris. I mean, we've talked a lot about how bad the backcourt has been for the uh, Utah Jazz all season long, and you know now you have a team like the uh, Clippers, who I want to say that was a, a big win last night for them against the Denver Nuggets, especially being without Kawhi Leonard. And, you know, anytime we usually see one of James, or sorry, one of Paul George or Kawhi Leonard out, James Harden typically does step up in those spots. Um, and again, it's just really a fade, like you mentioned, of this Utah Jazz defense that has been one of the worst in the entire league as well. Uh, right down there, we talked about the Toronto Raptors and such. So I uh, expect, you know, Harden to have a big game here tonight, especially without Kawhi Leonard in the lineup um with his assist so yeah definitely can get behind this one here as well uh all right for my next player prop here chris go to that spurs and the pelicans game man and, uh, and i'm i'm gonna back zion here i think it's gonna be a big game for him zion williamson to go over 27 and a half points in this game and you take a look at the spurs it's again more fading of the interior defenses um you know with the injury to brandon ingram uh, this has to be a, a spot where you you have to see Zion step up. And it's really been two guys for them, obviously, with CJ and Zion, because we know those two guys are going to get the shot volume. We know that Zion's going to get the minutes uh, as well. It's just about him just being efficient from the floor. Their last matchup, this is going to be the fourth matchup between these two teams, but the last matchup, Zion did score 33 points in that game against the San Antonio Spurs. The two prior games wasn't a very good night for him. He didn't get the shot volume. Um, but if you wanted to go back to last season and some of the games prior, he had three straight games of 30-plus points against the San Antonio Spurs team. And similarly to what I mentioned about the Washington Wizards, not really a lot of front court depth. I know they have Wimby back, uh, or um, they have Wimby that can block the shots and things like that, but I still think that this is going to be a tough matchup for the uh, San Antonio Spurs trying to contain Zion, who again, can get to the basket, get to the free throw line as well. So I do expect him not only to get the shot volume in this game, but also be really effective inside the paint here against the San Antonio Spurs. And especially in a game here, like we talked about at the top is a uh, top of the episode here, Chris, where now the Pelicans have lost three games in a row. And you're in that, you know, playing tournament bracket where you want to avoid getting out of there. Now they're having to play possibly an extra uh, game or even another game to get that a seventh or eighth seed. So I think the spot here for Zion to really step up here tonight against the San Antonio Spurs. So I'm going to take Zion over 27 and a half points here, Chris. Yeah, I like this one. You know, as soon as you, I hadn't thought about Zion because I know he was dealing with the finger injury and yeah, all that good stuff. But they 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 need to win in the in the worst way here, you know. And I think the other thing that you mentioned, and the first thing when I when when you say Chris, I'm taking Zion points against the San Antonio Spurs, I immediately go back to Brunson, right? The, the you want the player that's going to have the ball in their hands, that's going to be yeah. getting downhill. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's the guy for, for this team. So uh, love it. I think that they'll be super motivated, especially slipping into that playing spot like we talked about a little bit earlier. And um, it should be a big, big game for him specifically. I mean, especially with – and this was the reason why I like Brunson as well because the Sac- San Antonio Spurs have been doing a really good job of running teams off the three-point line. The three-point defense is actually top ten. So what does that lead to? A bunch of points in the paint. And like you said – um Zion is uh not Zion uh uh Victor Wimbayama is out here blocking shots and changing shots but uh teams are still gonna come right at him you know if they 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 want him to you know have to prove himself and uh Zion probably trying to get out on the break and 
uh, just really bully anybody else. They don't have a lot of defenders that can stay in front of them. And without Brandon Ingram, uh, he, his usage has to increase in this spot here, you know. So love it. Love the focus with them coming off the couple losses at home as well. Uh, it's a really good spot for Zion tonight. I like it. Uh, all right, Chris, take us over to player proud number three, man. What do you got? So <clears throat> one of the last games, you know, I'm banking on a guy that typically just plays really, really good basketball whenever he's a dog. And that's really the whole cap here. Uh, I'm looking at Anthony Edwards tonight uh, against the Phoenix Suns, understanding that Phoenix has been uh, solid defensively. Um, but I, the, the one thing I looked at to kind of handicap this one, you know, I always like playing on Anthony Edwards whenever he's in a situation as a dog. So I went back and looked into it, right? Uh, Timberwolves, they've been dogs with uh, at least one day's rest so far this season, um, 10 times in games that Anthony Edwards have played in. And he's played well in these spots. He had 33 the first time that they were a dog on the road, rested versus the Warriors. He's had 27 against Philly, 34 against Sacramento. We all remember him dropping 44 against the Indiana Pacers. Uh, about a month ago in Indiana, the game where he got that, uh, you know, that crazy block at the end. And he had a 37 point game in this spot against the Clippers as well. So uh, all the chips on the table here, Minov, I'm not trusting in Sacramento. Uh, I'm sorry, in uh, Phoenix defensively quite yet. I know that they can score. I, I totally understand that. And that's they, their offense has been really, really good. But um, I think I, I like the spot here, you know, for for. Well, I know I like the spot here. Uh, Anthony Edwards, he did play against uh, Phoenix one time earlier this season. He only had 13 points. Uh, he shot just four for 16. But I remember that game. You know, that was the second leg of a back to back, a third and four, fourth and fifth. And it was a fifth game in seven nights. So clearly not the greatest spot for him there in that game. So I think it's a big, big bounce back spot for him here. Um, before he had the 13 point game earlier this season, he did have back to back games where he had 31 last season against the same Phoenix Suns defense. Um, I think about the motivation, kind of like what you were saying with Zion him enough. And Minnesota, they need to win. They need to cold pace in the in the Western Conference um, because they do have Denver and OKC right on their tails, only a half game above Denver for the for the number one seed in the Western Conference. So uh, in a game where you catch Minnesota, uh, you know, getting points, uh, it's it's a spot where I'm looking to take Anthony Edwards points over every single time. We also last cap last part of the cap, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we remember DeRose, uh, I'm sorry, we remember Anthony Edwards said he wanted to see uh, Kevin Durant wear his shoes. And Kevin Durant said, you'll never catch me in those hideous things, right? So oh, a little added motivation as well uh, there. But I like Anthony Edwards in this five, you know, if, uh, at least I think it's a 30-point game incoming. But if I get to take 27 and a half, I'll definitely take it here, thinking that he steps up for his Minnesota Timberwolves, especially without uh, Carl Diddy Towns being a part of the rotation. Yeah, and this is another player that you know the minutes are going to be there, the shot volume is going to be there as well, right? Because I feel like that for this Timberwolves team, that he's really the primary guy that can number one create his own shot. Um, and there's not really other guys that can really do that on this Minnesota Timberwolves team without Carl Anthony Towns on the floor. So, um, yeah, I mean, you mentioned I love Anthony Edwards, this guy gives it 110% every single night. Um, and we again, the shot volume is going to be there for him coming off a game where he had 28 points against the uh Toronto Raptors. Um, did have a, a tough game, uh, shooting wise against the Phoenix Suns earlier this season. But if you go back to the last couple games, he did have 31 points or 30 plus points in each of those two games against the Phoenix Suns here. So, another, another Western Conference game here where again, Minnesota, we talked about buying for the number one seed in the Western Conference, Phoenix trying to avoid being in that play in tournament as well. Um, and again, this is a good spot here for Anthony Edwards. I think this is going to be, um, really glad this is going to be, I believe it's on national TV, uh, if I'm not mistaken, but definitely going to be watching this game here tonight for sure between these two teams. Um, Chris, for my third player prop here, I, and this is something that I believe we talked about maybe the last time these two teams matched up between the OKC Thunder and the Indiana Pacers. I'm going to go back to Pascal Siakam rebounds here. It's at over eight and a half is the number. It's at minus 130, a little bit of juice. But again, you got to take a look at what Pascal Siakam has done against this uh, OKC Thunder team rebounding wise. Uh, he's been in double digit rebounds in four straight matchups against this uh, Thunder team and dating back to his days, obviously, with the Raptors. So 11, 16, 14. And then these two teams matched up a little less than a month ago in Oklahoma City, where Pascal Siakam in that game had 18 points and 11 rebounds in that matchup. So at least 11 rebounds in four straight games for Pascal Siakam against the Thunder. 
and a team that's already going to be without Jalen Williams and um, SGA in this game. I think it's going to be a little bit of uh, tough, maybe some long shots, more rebounding opportunities, a lot more jump shots probably. But again, with the pace that the Indiana Pacers play out, we know the, the number of shot attempts are going to be there in this game. And I just do think that Siakam has another big game rebounding wise in this game here for the uh, Indiana Pacers against the Thunder team. So it is at eight and a half. Um, if you want to get um, some better odds, if you want to take a look at his double double in this game, I'm trying to pull up the exact odds for that for Pascal Siakam here. Let's see for a double double for him is going to be at plus 120. So either you could take the plus 120 double double, or if you want to ladder it up to you know 11, 12 rebounds for Siakam is definitely in the realm of possibility uh, for him, where who has done it already, already. Like I mentioned, four straight games in a row against the OKC Thunder. So Siakam over eight and a half rebounds here, Chris. Yeah, I like him. You know, I like that OKC is uh, while they were doing a really good job of, of grabbing some some rebounds, they they've actually started to take a slide down here. Uh, I got last two weeks they allowed the eighth most offensive rebounds, and we know Siakam can go down there and crash the glass. And uh, you know, they the Indiana Pacers have been an excellent uh, rebounding team as well. Uh, so love both of those angles. The other thing I wanted to add here, you know, is that Miles Turner is listed as questionable in this game. Last time yeah. I looked. And without him, he did miss the last game because he jammed his finger pretty badly uh, when they were playing against the Brooklyn Nets two games ago. Not in the last game he missed, the Brooklyn one. But without him, you know, if that could be uh, even more rebound opportunities. Uh, somebody else is going to have to crash the glass and, and make up for those rebounds that Miles Turner was getting as well. So a uh, couple extra points to go along with um, an excellent breakdown. And uh, Siakam is definitely in an advantageous matchup here against the Oklahoma City Thunder team that also probably is going to be a little tired him enough as well. Uh, second yeah. leg of a of a back-to-back for them. Um, well, not second leg of a back-to-back, but it's still a third game in four nights and a fourth game in six nights here for this uh, Oklahoma City Thunder team. So uh, every, for everything that you mentioned and a couple extra points, I like Siakam to go over uh, his rebound prop here as well. You know? All right. There is three player props each year. Chris, uh, let's get into some honorable mentions here, man. Do you have anything that you like? Yeah, I want to fade your boy here, you know, Jalen Green. Uh, looking at his points, they are 24 and a half. Um, taking a deeper dive, though, I just I, – it's kind of scary. I thought the Heat were doing a little bit better job. Um, I just don't I, – I think it's a fatigue spot here for Jalen Green. Second leg of a back-to-back, third game of four nights for your boy. Um, you know, could, could be in a major letdown spot after losing that game last night against the Golden State Warriors. Uh, the Miami Heat trapped a lot of ball handlers as well, making other teams beat them. Uh, they also one of the best defensive teams on the second leg of a back to back. I think they are something like seven and one uh, to the under in that spot. Uh, they they've uh, Jalen Green is really slowed down, and I think his numbers are a tad bit inflated because he was playing against some really poor defensive teams. But just thirteen points against the Golden State Warriors last night and twelve against the Dallas Mavericks. Miami needs wins, so they should be motivated. And Miami also plays at one of the really really slow paces in the league. The reason why I didn't press confirm him enough is because. Just over the last seven games, Maxi's hit them for 37. Dante DiVincenzo has had 31. CJ McCollum had 30. And Clay Thompson last night. I- I'm sorry, Clay Thompson against the same Miami Heat defense did have 28 as well. So I know Jalen Green's going to have the ball in his hands a lot. So it- it's the number is, is I think, a tad bit high, but I don't know if I want to pull the trigger just based on usage alone. Jalen Green could probably get there. But uh, him under is 24 and a half, you know, and the other one that I had on my short list. That I'm probably is I'm probably am going to play. Just I don't see a number for it yet. Is uh, DeAndre Aiden rebounds with you and Norman Powell him you know over over his threes. We know that the Jazz have been one of the worst defenses against the three point line. Uh, Norman Powell is going to get extra usage of course with no Kawhi Leonard and um, along this this goes with the Harden assist. Norman Powell is probably going to be the one out there knocking down the shots uh, from the assist from uh, either James Harden or. Russell Westbrook in this situation. So we don't have that prop yet, not available, but I yeah. did write that down because I will be looking to play a Norman Powell threes when that line is made available, depending on uh, the, the big that we get here, you know? Yeah, that's a great call. Again, uh, Jazz have really been struggling against uh, or struggling defending the three-point line is what I uh, should say. But yeah, especially like we mentioned, without Kawhi Leonard, the other role players are really going to have to step up uh, in that spot for uh, Kawhi Leonard now uh, should be a good offensive night against this Utah Jazz defense, so I don't hate that. Um, I'll mention Giannis here tonight against the Toronto Raptors, whether if you want to look at his points and rebounds. 
to go over. Uh, he's also recorded a triple double in two of the last three meetings against the um, Toronto Raptors. I know he's officially questionable on the injury report, uh, but I do expect him to be out there. You, them coming off of two embarrassing losses as a double digit favorite and losing outright in those two games. So now you're going up against the Toronto Raptors defense that has been the worst by a mile over the last five games. And if you just compare the numbers to the second worst defense, it's not even close for this Raptors team. So I think that Giannis is in line to have a really big night here, uh, scoring the basketball. I, I wanted to give him out, but again, I wasn't exactly sure because he's officially still listed as questionable. Uh, but his points prop, I believe I saw it at 30 and a half, if I'm not mistaken here. Let me just double check. Um, 29 and a half. Um, and his triple double here tonight, if you want to, you know, uh, get some nice odds on that. Uh, that number is sitting at, let's see if they have it posted. Giannis is at plus 550 for him to record a triple double. And again, like I mentioned, he's done it on two out of the last three games against the Toronto Raptors. Um not much real, oh, real, yeah, real quick in the comments you know just to, just a yeah. uh, Keyshawn Howard says you think a blowout uh it won't uh it won't hurt the prop and now and I, I, I would just want to address this one him you know because because you're right right um the, the, I think it's a 15 point spread I think Damian Lillard also um is going to return tonight so yeah uh, you may get that prop at a lower number with Dame potentially coming back but I don't think that it necessarily um I, I mean our <laughs> Is this is this Milwaukee Bucks team capable of blowing uh, you know any other team out? I think you go back and I know that the 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 Toronto Raptors are coming off a forty eight point loss against the Minnesota Timberwolves. Mm -hmm. However, they were extremely shorthanded. We got to remember, you know, R.J. Barrett didn't play in that game. Uh, I think, uh, uh, well, I know Kelly Olynyk had the night off. Bruce Brown didn't play. They didn't have Obaji. And I think all of those guys are supposed to return today. So, yeah, uh, you know, back you know back to back double digit. Uh, um, you know, spread. Awesome. They, they were double-digit favorites in both of those games. Is what I was trying to say. Yeah. They've lost both. So I don't. I think Giannis will be a part of the reason why they, they score a lot of points. But I'm not sure how much of, of a blowout it'll actually be. Um, so the, I, I wouldn't talk. I wouldn't let it talk you off too much if you like it. Kisha. Yeah, I think also is uh, I wanted to back the Bucks, and I'm talking about player props in, in a way here. Uh, I, like you mentioned, I can't get behind their spread at 15 after what's transpired over the last two games for them. So I pivoted to their team total to go over here tonight at 121 and a half. Now I see up to around 122 in this game. And in the last four games for the um, Toronto Raptors, they've given up, I believe, a minimum 125 points in those four games. So if there's ever a a medicine that the doctor ordered for this Milwaukee Bucks team, it is the Toronto Raptors defense here. Uh, that can uh, get eaten up by this buck team, especially inside the paint here. So, um, yeah, I mean, you're right that, uh, you know, uh, a blowout could turn into a, uh, where props go to die. But I just right now can't trust this Bucks team uh, to cover big numbers. And again, they could come out here and win by 30 points and just take their frustrations out. Um, but I need to see it before I can trust this team. As for, like we mentioned, coming off those two losses as a double digit favorite. Um, I think that is pretty much it. Um, I was considering Porzingis points and or rebounds. We did just see right before we started the recording here, Chris, that Jalen Brown and I think Al Horford is the other one that's going to be out here tonight. Um, let me just double check. Here. Derek, oh, sorry, Derek, Derek White. White. Yeah, 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 I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Uh, so Jalen Brown and Derek White, and then uh, if you want to pivot off of those two guys and not play Tatum or Porzingis, I think Peyton Pritchard might be a good pivot as well here tonight. Sam Hauser, probably Sam, a good, good yeah, pivot Hauser here. as well. Yeah, uh, great point there. So those are the couple guys you may want to look at as far as a pivot, avoiding uh, the big names. Um, Chris Haynes reporting that Damian Lillard is going to play here tonight for the Milwaukee Bucks, and I don't see anything officially for Yanni said, but I would. Uh, assume that he does play here tonight as well for the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, anything else as far as uh, honorable mentions here, Chris? No, nah, I think that was it. Hit me enough. I I gotta take a deeper dive. Maybe add one more, but um, I think the Rosen and you know, if I add something, it'll probably be one of the honorable mentions we mentioned. But I like the Rosen. I like Harden. Really like Anthony Edwards, and I like um, like I said, no number yet, but I do like. Uh, do like uh, Norman Powell, Norman Powell. and I'm I'm, I'm gonna add uh, Aiden rebounds, you know. So I think I don't want to go too crazy, but I like the spots that we found for here for sure. Anything else yeah. you, you you thought about? 
No, I think that was pretty much it. Uh, just uh, I didn't see this note last night, but Tyler Hero is returning uh, tonight mm-hmm. for the Miami Heat as well. So, uh, you know, they're getting their horses uh, healthy, uh, getting ready for the playoff run because we know what those guys are capable of. Other than that, um, yeah, not much else that really stuck out to me. Uh, let me just glance here real quick before we do get into player props. Other than that, I yeah, nothing really else stuck out to me. Um, Warriors Mavericks. I mean, if you want to look at a Luca triple double or Luca rebounds, I think that's always a great look. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll we'll leave it at that here, Chris. Let's get into best bets, my man. Uh, let's throw out our best bets here to wrap it up here. What do you got as your best bet? I'm going Anthony Edwards here. You know, like I said, points that's sitting at 27 and a half, man. Just and is the dog, and this these are the games that he lived for. When you see the Minnesota Timberwolves with a plus beside their name, meaning that they're a dog. Anthony Edwards is typically the guy that's going to show up and show out. And I like him. Uh, I like the way that Phoenix has been scoring, which will mean that, you know, Minnesota will come in here and have to score. And I laid out some of the numbers as, as road dogs with a little bit of rest. He has a 33-point game against the Wizards, uh, 34 versus Sacramento, 44 against Indiana, 37 against the Clippers. So big, big game here, Munoz. Uh, like you said, nationally televised game as well. Um, I like uh, Anthony Edwards to show show up and show out in this spot here, Munoz. So give me a – Anthony Edwards over 27 and a half points here. Best bet. Love it. Uh, all right. For my best bet, I'm going to go with DeAndre Ayton here, man. I think it just makes too much sense um, for us not to make that uh, the best bet here for tonight, especially with like all the mentioned, all, all the opposing centers that have had success rebounding the basketball against this uh, Washington Wizards team. So right now that number is at 13 and a half. It's a big number. It's a big number for a reason. Again, guys, don't don't be afraid of it. I think that he could, you know, walk into 15 plus rebounds here tonight uh, as far as the rebounding prop here for DeAndre Aiden. So I will make that my best bet. DeAndre Aiden over 13 and a half rebounds here right now at plus 100 currently over on DraftKings. That's going to wrap it up here for the NBA prop cast. Chris, anything else we want to mention, my friend, before we get out of here? Nah, man, just, uh, you know, check us out uh, on all podcast streaming platforms and wherever you are checking us out, uh, leave us a review, especially if it's, you know, if it's helpful for you guys to listen to the show and kind of hit the analytics and the spots that myself and, you know, for, uh, you know, presenting for our case for these players um, and leave us a review, man. Five, I always say yeah. five star, five star. Definitely helpful. Uh, enjoy the games, everyone. Enjoy the weekend. We got, uh, you know, outside of basketball, we got some baseball going on, some some college basketball going on um and uh yeah enjoy the weekend bet responsibly and uh hopefully we we give out some winners here you know yeah hopefully uh we do have another winning podcast here i know we were on that six and oh run uh a couple pods ago um i think we went three and three in the last pod so hopefully we do have a winning pod here before we get into the final week of the regular season that we'll be here of course for the playoffs as well for the nba podcast so definitely looking forward to all of that uh you guys make sure to follow chris on uh twitter that's at crispy cap and two p's and two n's you can follow me there at sports nerd 824 uh Keyshawn, just to answer your question we usually try to go wednesdays and fridays around 12 45 p.m eastern time but we may be shifting the nba pod schedule around a little bit so maybe you get a little bit of more of me and more chris maybe three to four times a week if you know our schedules do line up so uh yeah just keep an eye out for it uh, this would just be a great time to subscribe to the NBA Gambling Podcast feed so you know uh, when the NBA pod for sides and totals go lives and then also for our NBA player props as well. Uh, we do talk about player props on the NBA pod, but we get a little bit more in-depth here uh, on the propcast as well, which is specifically just for player props again uh, on the propcast here. I, I will talk to you guys the next week. Enjoy the weekend. Enjoy the games, and we'll talk to you guys then. Good luck with your bets. Let's break these books off and lay, let. It ride.